There's a lot of things that are considered normal in a conventional lifestyle that I no longer buy, or more importantly, buy into. Because buying is more than just with your dollars, it's with your time and your energy. And these are 26 things I no longer buy into to simplify my life. Hey guys, my name is Chris. You're watching Nomad Over Normal, a channel where we dive deep into the departure of a conventional lifestyle. If you're interested in this sort of thing, I invite you to subscribe and like this video. And here we go. The first thing that I do not buy anymore is important enough to be number one on this list. The rest of this list is out of order, of course, but this has to go number one. And what that is, is junk food on a weekly basis. What I don't do is keep junk food in my house. Every once in a while, I will buy junk food intentionally. I'll get a chocolate chip muffin or chips and salsa, but I don't keep my house full of snacks to pick at. I don't wanna be worrying about that battle with resistance in my brain in order to fatigue myself and cave in. Stephen Pressfield in his book, The War of Art, talks about resistance uh, being the, the, the absolute evil. And I feel like whenever there's any sort of resistance that can eventually fatigue us and make us cave, that's not good. It's so much easier to just not give into temptation by not having temptation in front of you. And that coincides with number two on my list. I don't go out to eat very often. So going out to eat is number two on my list. If I go out to eat, it's for a special occasion. The unfortunate thing that really helps with this is my girlfriend has a chronic illness that keeps her from being able to consume a lot of normal foods. So there's pretty much no restaurants in our area that she can eat with the exception of one. So we're forced to eat every meal at home and that's created a healthy habit of us being more intentional with our food. And that coincides with number three is food delivery apps. There was one time where I downloaded a food delivery app because of a, like a free coupon where they gave you like $30 towards an order. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll get, I don't know, a burrito delivered. And I get this burrito delivered. And after the $30, it was, I still owed different convenience fees and stuff like that. And it was just like, Ugh, it felt like who would waste their money on this thing? It's just creating a perpetual bad habit. Next is sugary condiments. And this is something that many people don't consider, but um, as somebody that cooks a lot at home, we want really good food and, and condiments and, and toppings are important to us, but we realize how bad a lot of the condiments we were using. So for example, I always loved Sweet Baby Ray's, but that's so toxic. Even the soy sauce I was buying had all these added chemicals. So what I started doing was buying instead more expensive versions with less ingredients. Primal Kitchen is one of my favorite brands of ketchup and barbecue sauce. I get it at Whole Foods. It's like double the price but it's worth it because it's only pure ingredients inside. There's only one bad ingredient and that's citric acid, but that's an exception we make for convenience. And on top of that, the soy sauce I buy is now organic soy sauce where it's just one ingredient instead of the list of ingredients that my other soy sauces have had. Next on our list is cut up vegetables and fruit and food in small packages pre-seasoned chicken, pre-cut vegetables, that sort of thing. The reason we avoid this is one, we don't get to control the ingredients, but two, you're paying such a price premium per pound, it's ridiculous. Cut up watermelon could be $9 a pound versus a $4, 15 pound watermelon that you get yourself. It's never worth it. Only in a pinch should you be buying this stuff, but a lot of people buy it in this zombie brain of convenience, and we'd make an intentional choice just not to do that. We do buy frozen vegetables, but that's different than fresh vegetables. Um, for some reason, there's just not a premium when you buy frozen vegetables that are chopped up. It's pretty much the same as fresh whole vegetables. So we're not counting that in this. Next up is energy drinks of any kind. I've somehow gone my entire life without trying Monster or Red Bull and avoiding a caffeine addiction. Right now, I've been grinding up my own decaf coffee. I just do not want to be reliant on any sort of additives or things into my diet that I become dependent on. 
I could uh, see a lot of negative side effects being brought on by that sort of stuff, so I tried to avoid it. Next up is alcohol. Um, I never buy alcohol anymore. I used to work for a cocktail YouTube channel and I have enough alcohol to support many lifetimes and right now I don't even know why I have this much because I never drink it. If I were to go out to a restaurant, well, we're in New Jersey, so a lot of restaurants don't even have a liquor license. I never order alcoholic drinks with the exception of a small handful of times in my entire life. Alcohol is just something I do not consume very regularly and it's definitely something I do not spend money on. Number eight on the list is supermarket supplements. Supermarket supplements of any kind, forget about the uh, ineffective potency of the dosages. They have so many additives. It's it should be illegal to sell some of this stuff. I'm talking about your normal multivitamins, your protein powders, anything in the supplement section of a GNC. Did I say that right? GMC or GNC? Your GNC general nutrition store. I don't even know, I, I forget. Or your grocery store. You just gotta avoid that stuff. It's full of complete trash. Another thing that I don't buy anymore is cleaning supplies for different use cases. I don't use a bunch of different chemicals for different things and for breezes and, and whatnot. I use one thing for everything. I have dish soap that I squirt into a bottle, shake it up with some water, and now that's my surface cleaner. I use the same spray bottle that's been around for literal decades. I'm pretty sure this particular spray bottle is from like the 1970s or something, but I just refuse to buy cleaning products because they're all the same. My girlfriend doesn't even like me using Dawn dish soap because it's got too much chemicals. So most of the time we just use water and vinegar and that's all we need for an all purpose cleaner. Uh, I don't buy low quality soaps anymore. I'm trying to wean off of Dawn, but it's hard to. So but by soap, I mean low quality hand soaps. I used to just get soft soap, but now we've made an active investment into purchasing higher quality soaps with more natural ingredients. And I'm not even talking about Mrs. Myers because that's not even pure. That's not even good quality soap. It's got toxic stuff in it. I'm not gonna be shouting out any brands here, but read the labels of the things you're buying. And if you can't pronounce the words, you probably don't want it. Number 12 is toxic candles and uh, scents. So anything that populates the house with some sort of unnatural scents, even from a candle, um, I try to avoid. I like burning candles sometimes too. I just avoid the toxic kind. So you get something made out of beeswax, which is gonna be a price premium, but it's, it's a higher quality burn. It's gonna last longer and it's gonna be healthier for you to breathe in. And of course, I guess the other thing we could attach to this, I never bought it in the first place, are those plug-in air fresheners, which have terrible, terrible wax coatings being emitted into the, into the air and it coats your lungs and makes, uh, it's really cancerous. It's really, really not good for you. Don't, don't buy that. I'm not even having it on my list. I'm just throwing that in there as a bonus. Next up on my list is video equipment. My profession is a, as a video marketer, as a videographer, and you kind of need equipment for that. And I do buy equipment, but honestly, every five years, every 10 years. I could name on one hand the amount of times I've purchased equipment. This camera, tripod, light, microphone. Actually, I didn't even buy this. I don't know how I have it. The reason that I have this on my list is because a lot of people are hoarders. I see a lot of people online that do not have good technical skills with, let's say, video and they might be a videographer. And in my videographer community, at least what I see peers do online is they compensate a lack of education and actual tangible skills with thinking, oh, if I just upgrade my equipment, I'll get more jobs or I'll be better. That's not always the case. Actually, that's never the case. I've never been hired for the equipment that I own. I always rent, I always borrow for Every five or 10 years, I'll splurge on a new piece of equipment if something breaks or needs replacement. That's the only time I purchase gear 
for my work. Technology is a depreciating asset and it's something I do not want rotting on my shelves at home. The next thing that I used to buy but I do not anymore is online courses. I don't think I've ever, ever finished an online course. And that's a real shame because a lot of effort goes into some of the courses that I buy. I could tell by the authors, but the thing is there's no feedback. There's no haptic feedback system or a community or anything um, to help nurture my education. I remember being in school, it's so easy to, to, to learn because you learn off of other people and you learn off of doing, but when you're on an online course, it's kind of like a background music. And I'd rather learn from a book from the library. If you want to see a video about libraries, click right here. I just think online courses, at least for me, are a waste of money because I've spent a lot of money on courses on different subjects and all they are is an expensive Netflix subscription to me. Um, I guess I get gold nuggets here and there, but at the end of the day, it's just not, not for me. And number 15 for me is new social medias. Um, I have accounts with different social media platforms, but I don't keep them on my phone. A good example is TikTok. I have my name secured and I've uploaded three times in the three years that I've had it, but I don't keep it on my phone and I don't subscribe to new social medias because it's just another thing to get addicted to and I don't need that taking up my time and energy anymore. Number 16, this is an interesting one. It's clothes with logos. I don't wear logos on my clothes or at least I don't buy them anymore and I only wear them to bed or to the gym. To me, I don't wanna be a walking billboard. I feel like a lot of people spend money in order to get the logo when I'm just like, hang on, I should be paid to wear your shirt. I don't want to be a walking billboard for you. So this shirt, no logos. Number 17 is meaningless wall art. I hang a lot of things on the wall at my house, but most of them are my own photography from trips I've been on. And that has a lot of meaning for me. I'm not going to a random store and getting mass produced art. One art piece that I do have that isn't my photography is hanging over my desk and that's a Picasso print. And that print means a lot to me because it's a drawing of the bull and each iteration of that drawing is less complex than the predecessor. That's the art of simplification because a great artist can make a complex, beautiful bull, but only a master can make a bull in like four to six strokes. And that Picasso painting says so much to me. How much can you articulate with the fewest strokes of a pen possible? Good writers, good painters, good filmmakers do that. Next up is any form of new subscription service. I haven't subscribed to a new thing in a long time, even for my work. If I do subscribe to something, it's for one project and I pay for the month instead of the year. And I get the month is probably, I don't know, two times more expensive. But the thing is I'm intentional with my purchases. I don't wanna be put on autopilot and zombified into perpetually paying money into a company. And that goes into number 19 and 20. Number 19 is impulsive buys. I don't buy things on a whim. It's not a thing I do. Even when there's a new article of clothing or a piece of equipment, I either do research or wait weeks, months, I wait a long time before making that purchase because the purchase is more than just buying the thing. It's maintaining it, it's repairing it, it's storing it, and all of that comes with added costs that I don't want to add burden and responsibility into my life. So I'm pretty resistant to buying things and I have to vet things thoroughly, like do we actually need this? And number 20, this is gonna sound ridiculous until it doesn't anymore, is things on sale. I feel like I always get burned with sale items because they're always like fake sales, um, especially on Amazon or at the grocery store. I'll see peaches or something on sale or cherries. And then it's just like, oh, I need the digital coupon and I need the app and it's just like all this headache stuff. So I always get burned because I pay full price for something that should be on sale and I get confused and it's just like, screw it, I'm gonna buy it anyway. And so I've just trained myself after paying full price for my cherries when I thought I was gonna get it for half price. I've just been burned too many times. And when I see an item on sale, 
I'm just not gonna buy it because that goes with number 19, my impulse purchases that I don't do. I guess the only exception I could think of to buying something on sale is when I had a premeditated item that I plan to purchase. Like let's say I wanted to buy a new camera and I knew there was a Black Friday deal coming down the road or a new release coming down the road. I'm just gonna hold off and wait for the sale. But I don't even do that. And number 21 is pre-orders. I do not pre-order anything. I remember being a video game player in the early 2010s, pre-ordering games and being burned perpetually. It's not a thing I do anymore. I don't pre-order technology of any kind. Number 22 is things that get me into debt. I will not replace my car with a car payment. When I bought my car, I paid cash for it. I don't buy anything that involves uh, buy now, pay later. I think that's the biggest scam in our society and we should be more financially conscious about what we're buying. It's not part of my life. I'm personally debt free and I feel like everyone should be working towards being debt free. Number 23 is fake plants. I have real plants in my house. Sometimes they're hard to maintain and sometimes they start dying for absolutely no reason and I don't know why. And it's like heartbreaking and stressful, but at the same time, I don't need another thing being a dust collector in my house. I love the green space I created indoors and I want to maintain that. And I don't really care if I have to replace a plant that dies it doesn't happen as often as you might think. It's probably happened once in my life. I just don't want fake plants because all it is is junk and a dust collector. I spent like four or five months to find this place. Um, I wasn't gonna spend a lot of money on it. And I feel like I have enough money saved up right now that I could live here for years without working ever again. And I feel like a lot of that comes from how little my rent is in comparison to what other people I know spend on rent. And for me, that creates a lot of emotional buffer. Like I'm able to sleep at night without worrying for money. If I was paying double in rent than I do right now, it would be pretty stressful. I would be thinking about, okay, I have to make money. But right now I'm just like, not worried about that. Number 25, as we're wrapping up this, is watching the news. I never watch the news. I never get educated from the news because the news is not a source of education. You always learn in retrospect. You never learn in the moment. In the moment is fear mongering. In the moment is ideology formation and, um, and swaying and persuasion. Nothing good has ever come from watching the news. No one has ever learned something that they needed to. There's no reason you need to be flipping through channels. If there's uh, some sort of massive event going on, um, I learn enough from anecdotes from people to form my own opinion. Finally, last on this list is number 26. Is anything that's a low quality item that needs to be replaced shortly after I purchase. This is like cheap Tupperware versus expensive Tupperware. Nowadays, I just buy glass Tupperware. I'm phasing out all the plastic and buying glass as they break and chip. I'm also talking about backpacks. I feel like the best backpack I've ever owned, I've owned for literally 20 years and it has no sign of wear and tear. It's an LL Bean bag, it's amazing. I've had other backpacks that are just I don't know, maybe trendier, and they break within months or a couple years of use, and it's just unfortunate. I always say you gotta buy it once, because as somebody that, for example, I don't purchase video equipment, I've owned, like I said earlier, I just wanna get the right thing, I wanna get the first time, and if it's a price premium, that's okay with me. Anyway, guys, these are 26 things I do not buy, into anymore to simplify my life. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe.